All right, it's that time once again, day 84. Uh, we're going to continue on with my build. Uh, for those that don't know, though, today was the day that the Minecraft 1.7 update was released. Uh, this update added a fix so that clay would now spawn naturally again, instead of just at the X and Z, but uh, mostly it, it introduced pistons. Uh, you can see here I've made some iron armor. I've already built one, we'll go ahead and build another just to give these things a try. Um, I've got some ideas of how to use them, but uh, I haven't bothered to actually try to implement any of it yet. But I'll get around to it. But you need one redstone, one uh, bar of iron, two pieces of cobblestone, and three pieces of wood plank in the uh, in this formation. There you go. Piston. And of course you need a lever to operate them. This lever is it's just a, uh, a stick on top of a cobblestone block to craft a lever. But let's go ahead and add these down real quick. Uh, they do place in the direction you're facing. So like see here. That one was sideways instead of up and down. Then pop a lever and choo, choo, choo. Simple. Uh, thankfully, they're easy to oh, watch. Let's see, leave the block up, pushes it up. You can make a sticky piston, which will then pull a block back down, or forward, or backwards, or up, or whatever. Uh, but it requires a slime ball. Slime balls are only dropped off of slime mobs, and they are not easy to obtain. Uh, slimes only spawn from like level 10 down towards the bedrock. So you have to be way down at the bottom of the map and they only spawn in like really large caverns. Uh, so it has to be, you, know, you have to clear out a huge amount of space for the opening for them to initially spawn in the area. And then they only spawn in certain chunks to begin with. So it's kind of an, an iffy thing to start with. Uh, today we're gonna make some powered rails and now that I finally have redstone, I went digging down in the uh, the depths of my dungeon, and I collected quite a bit of redstone. Uh, there we go. Uh, each one makes six. That's uh, but the only good thing gold has a use for besides making a, uh, a clock, which I haven't bothered to do yet. Because I usually don't need it that badly. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What am I looking for? Oh, there it is. My minecart. Minecarts are made just like boats, except out of iron. So let's uh, power things up here. Let's see, I'm gonna put it right. Let's go, yeah. And, and, it's, not on. It would be glowing red if it was on. Right, so I need a redstone torch to power these. Easy enough. They're made just kind of like normal torches, except instead of coal, you use redstone. And you don't get multiples of them, though. Each one only makes one. So, thankfully, redstone, once you start finding it, is like crazy plentiful. Like, you'll just run into it all the time. Let me go ahead and make quite a few of these. There we go. Redstone torches have all sorts of uses for powering things. They can also uh, be used to power the, the pistons and doors and anything that moves in the game. So. Alright, this will require a little careful engineering. Let's see, I need to block there. And let's see one there, one there, and I'm drowning. I'm stuck. <laughs> Here we go. Cause you can't place a torch in water, even a redstone torch. Let's see, so dirt. Dirt. And we dig out the area. It's already dry down here. Awesome. Place 
torch. See, it glows. It's got power. And it's bright red now, so it works. Awesome. I can now push my cart forward. I'll have to install several of these little posters, I imagine. But uh, let's see how this works. So, put it on. Push it a little, and yay! And we're slowing down. <laughs> uh, can I make it? It's, uh, it's like I'm getting close. Come on. Yes, yes. It was a little slow, but I made it. All right, cool. Pick that up. Unlike boats, you can pick your minecarts up, which is totally not fair. I wish I could pick my boats up. Alright, so I'm done with that for now. Let's get to work on the building part. Uh, first things first, I need to... Let's see. Let's go up here. I need to go up. I'm going to start off by putting a floor down. top of the glass. Yeah. Alright, let's see, where was I? The next in my list of RPGs. Um, I imagine one of the next things to list would have to be Chrono Trigger. If you haven't had a chance, or you were too young to get a chance to play Chrono Trigger, I strongly recommend it. It is one of the more ingenious RPGs I've ever seen. Um, I really liked it uh, initially purely for the fact that it has no random battles. Chrono Trigger is um, you can see your mobs on the map at any one, any time and so you can usually choose whether or not you want to in instigate battle. Um, not always, because it doesn't, uh, some mobs are always in, are in the ways of pathways and you can't go by without fighting them, but for the most part, it's a, uh, relatively, uh, easy thing to do if you want to avoid battles, uh, although, like any RPG, avoiding battles, if you're able, for too long will cause you to be so low in level that when you get to like bosses you won't be able to handle it so it's not advised to like skip entirely but it was a neat little mechanic that I hadn't seen before um, I was actually not part of the initial generation that played Chrono Trigger like I had heard of it but I never had a chance to play it uh, when I was in the Super Nintendo days uh, me and my buddies that play, we weren't really in RPGs at all, so we didn't ever play any. Like I said, my very first RPG was Shadowrun and then Super Mario RPG, and I didn't really think of them as RPGs at the time as far as the way the genre is defined nowadays, because they were just fun games that had this interesting mechanic of leveling that I wasn't really familiar with, and I'm out of wood points. <laughs> uh, so... It wasn't until I played Final Fantasy VII that I began to understand what RPG, the RPG genre was. And, um, it was, you know, so I missed out on Chrono Trigger, and I didn't play it until it was re-released on the PlayStation 1 with the Final Fantasy IV combo in the Final Fantasy Chronicles pack that came out. So, it was, um... It was a new experience for me then, and I was already a teenager at this point. And it was it was a fun game to play. Like I had never experienced even to that day. I mean, just RPGs were still random battles. You could never avoid your boss mobs or any of that kind of stuff. So it was it was a new experience. Oh, I already had her. Nice. Um. So, Chrono Trigger was, and is, one of the more interesting RPGs I've ever played. It, um, it starts off 
very cliche. Like I said, like a lot of RPGs. It's got, you know, your, your hero wakes up, he's late for a meeting to go meet his friends, and and it starts off, you know, just very simply, and then all of a sudden you're off on this grand adventure. And the main premise of Chrono Trigger is that you're traveling through time. It's, it's a time travel game. But it does it in a way that's supremely brilliant. Um... It actually has, like, effect. Like, um, traveling through time means something. Like, you can go into the past in the game and do certain actions or instigate certain scenarios and then travel into the future and see the results of your actions. And so it's a, uh, it's, it's an ingenious ploy of gameplay mechanic because it requires you to think fourth dimensionally when it came to solving some puzzles or uh, pursuing or progressing through the plot which was something that games really didn't do very much uh, and it's unfortunate I think they should really do that more often pushing that extra like dimension of thought I mean there was a few games that did similar stuff like um, uh, Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver had a similar effect because you could bounce in and out of dimensions that had different progress levels of where the structure had either crumbled or remained or stuff like that. So there's, there's other games that have sort of harked on the similar process, and I know other games that have had, you know, uh, time mechanics, and they're interesting, but none of them really had the same breath of not like breath breathe, but breath, I don't know how to say that word, uh, but they didn't have the same, like, reach of how this fit into things, it didn't come out and go, oh wow, that's a really ingenious way to pull that off kind of scenario. Let's see, I need to install some more boosters here, but so... It starts off unassuming, and it's 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 got like consequences too. Like your choices actually matter. Like the order you do events, and the people you talk to or don't talk to, the items you pick up can and can't all have effects on future encounters in the game. And like one of the most prevalent was like the initial starting scene. You bump into this girl and she drops a pendant and depending upon how you react you're either accused of assaulting her or trying to steal her pendant whether or not you talk to her first or you try to pick the pendant up first kind of thing so it's got this this extra level of of depth <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> take a drink <clears throat> uh, uh, it's fun to record this extra level of depth into the, the system of how it works, and you don't find many games that do that. Like the closest modern equivalent I can think of is like uh, that just came out a game called Heavy Rain, and a game before that was um, uh, the pr the precursor to it called um, uh, it's either Fahrenheit in other countries or it's called. Um, Indigo Prophecy in the U.S., but it was a uh, it was the same kind of premise where you, your actions actually mattered and things sort of related to how you responded to others, and it was really interesting. And I think what kind of set Chrono Trigger apart is you could literally fight the boss of the game almost immediately, like your final encounter. You could just jump right to the point when uh, your great evil was supposed to arrive in the world and go fight it. And uh, it's interesting because the whole time you're playing, uh, I'm getting interrupted. Uh, the whole time you're playing, you can go back and fight your the main boss at different time periods. And it's interesting because when you choose to fight him can affect your ending and your outcome in the game itself. So, I mean, not only do you get, you know, multiple choices of how the game runs and responds to your decisions, 
but you even get multiple endings depending on when you actually, you know, time-wise choose to fight the main boss. So it's kind of like got this great replay value. And I wholeheartedly recommend the um, the uh, the PlayStation version simply because it came with extra uh, cutscenes that were animated in oops in uh, like actual animations like uh, anime animation style. And the the art director who did uh, the character designs for Chrono Trigger is uh, Akira Toriyama, the same guy that did Dragon Ball Z. And so the, the characters all have like a Dragon Ball Z kind of look to them. Uh, it's not really prevalent too much in their sprites, but it's definitely prevalent elsewhere, like in, in the cutscenes and in the uh, and in the character graphics, like the images of the characters that are available in the game. I'm hearing something weird. What the hell is that noise? It's like something stepping on dirt, but there's no dirt around here. Mm, okay, can't see anything. It's too dark. Okay, um, so, anyways, like I say, back to the uh, can't even play mechanics. Uh, Corner Trigger also featured um, the expression, it's a, a multiple team member, like, battle um, maneuvers like you could have you know dual attacks like where two members of your party would in during battle would you know instigate an attack at the same time and it would do more damage but of course you just set it up and sacrifice that other characters move during that round to to do the double attack but it was you know just an interesting tactical element and depending on what characters you paired together in battle you could have multiple variations of of uh you know, your, your, I forget what they called it, of your multiple character battle routine uh, options, whatever, I can't remember the actual name, I haven't played it in so long. Um, what uh, was great about it though is that it just added an extra level of, of strategy, like there were some moves that were actually more particularly strength uh, particularly useful against certain types of mobs or certain types of uh, boss encounters, and it, it was really, uh, what's the word here, it was really well thought out, and I like that, there's not enough well thought out in, in games anymore, <laughs> so it's just it's one of those games, it's just like, wow, this was cool, so... Chrono Trigger is is on my uh, my top ten. It's it, I don't know. Like I said, Team of Gears is definitely my favorite RPG of all time. It'll always be my number one must play RPG. But um, I don't know ranking wise where a lot of the others fall. Like they could be two, they could be three. Uh, but Chrono Trigger would definitely be high up there in my recommendations. It's just it's so interesting, and it just it keeps you engaged the whole time around and there's just not enough of that you know fully engaged all the time there was a creeper here last night hopefully he won't still be here this morning and okay we're good just get that there we go lay down and go work on my ceiling some more or my floor or whatever the next level Oops, I still haven't dug that out. Fix that later. <laughs> so many things to fix later. I want to figure out a use for my pistons to automate my uh, mushroom harvesting. That should be interesting when I get around to that, too. But that'll be later. Always later. Oops, ate that block. If you put down a half block on top of, like, loose blocks to pick up, little I block items, it'll, like, eat the block sometimes, and you'll lose it, so be careful if you don't want to lose something important, Let's go, oh my god, it was a diamond block, yeah, that would, that would suck, <laughs> I still haven't encountered any diamond, I finally got some redstone, but no diamond yet, someday, Make me a lovely diamond pick. Oops. Ah, 
I don't know, I've played a lot of RPGs, and uh, some of them are really crap. Like, I played this one that seemed like a really great one at the time. It was called uh, Shadow of Madness, or Shadows of Madness, or something. It was, you know, a PS1 RPG, and it seemed like it had promise. And it was just... I don't know, it was awful. Like, um... Like, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever played Legend of like, Gaia, but uh, it had a similar feel to that game and as far, but it was just... It didn't really make sense, the battle schematic, the battle schemes were weird, and... I mean, some people really loved Legend of Gaia. I thought it was horrible. And the sequel was even worse, in my opinion, but, uh, everybody's got their... their, their fan... object... Uh, fan obsessions with some games. It just wasn't for me. <laughs> it's for some people, but it's, it's definitely not for me. So, yeah. I passed on that one. So much wood. But I said, pick it up. If you can get the, uh, the remastered PlayStation version. I think it's available for PSP now. If you've got one of those, uh, there might even be like a Nintendo DS version by now. Who knows? It's, it's extremely popular. So, despite being popular, there's still a lot of people that haven't had a chance to play it. But I do recommend it. I think I'm gonna call it on this video since I'm done talking about Chrono Trigger. Uh, and I will see you next time. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, stop and then we'll pick up immediately right back here where we are so I will uh, catch you shortly I'm gonna get to work on the next narration right away so uh, that's it I will uh, see you next time goodbye <laughs>